Topaz just released their brand new photo AI program and I got early access to it to check it out and review it for you guys. Today, I'll be diving into how it works with actual wildlife photography images I've taken and if I think it holds up to the standard that they've set with their previous programs, as well as giving a 15% off discount code in the description below for those who are interested in purchasing it. Later this week, I'll also be diving into Topaz Denoise AI and Topaz Sharpen AI, the programs, how they work, and how they fit into my workflow. So if you wanna keep up with that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you can see when those videos come out. So to start out, Topaz Photo AI just has this big old blank screen with the browse images or drop images. So I'm gonna to go to my folder and select my file. So now that I'm there, it's loading it in. And what it's doing initially is you can see kind of the autopilot feature over here and it's telling you what's going on. So it says subject detected. If, you, uh, if I look over it, you can see that detects the subject right there. No faces detected, subject is in focus is what it's claiming, and image noise level is medium. So then accordingly, what Topaz Photo AI is doing is it's automatically determining and detecting what they think you need in your images. So you'll notice that it just got clean automatically, and that's because of the fact that the image noise level, it determined as being medium, so then it accordingly adjusted and cleaned up my image to kind of get rid of that medium level noise. So you can see below here, this is showing what it's doing. On the AI filters, it has a face recovery, has a remove noise, has a sharpen, and it has an enhance. Essentially, you can kind of think of it in the way of remove noise. For those of you who have used Topaz programs before, remove noise is kind of like throwing in a lot of the denoise AI features. Sharpen is kind of like throwing in a lot of the sharpen AI features, and enhance is kind of like throwing in a lot of the gigapixel AI features, as well as this resizing down here, which allows you to kind of create more pixels in it as well. So now that it's automatically done everything, you have a couple of different options of what you could do. If you'd like, you can override things manually. So for example, I can click on this noise here and you'll see I can adjust it to be normal, strong. I can adjust the strengths on it. That's what it's recommending right there. I could turn it off as well if, I, if I'd like. So you can notice when I turn it off, all the noise came back onto the screen. When I turn it back on, it got all cleaned up again. Personally, I kind of like how it did the noise already. I don't think it really needs to be adjusted there too much. And that's one of the awesome things about Photo AI is it really just kind of automatically does a pretty decent job of detecting things. However, when I did take this image before, I did like sharpening it up a little bit, which I actually even did just in Denoise AI. But the remove noise feature here on Photo AI does not allow you to sharpen it up. You have to actually go to the sharpen tab. So let's try to click that on and just see if it can give us a little bit of extra. Here you have two options. You have lens blur, motion blur. It definitely would not be motion blur because there's not motion blur going on here but what is happening is a just a little bit of shallowly missed depth of field right so uh with lens blur it helped get that even sharper in focus i don't know if you could see that happen right there it did help a little bit in terms of getting the bird a little bit sharper if we go to this side by side comparison i like this feature as well in which you can see the before and the after, and you can notice just how much more sharp the bird gets and how much more clean the whole background gets. It looks really, really nice. And Photo AI seems to do a pretty good job generally with this. So for the sake of it, let's save this image and let's pop in a new image right here. Okay, so we have one more new image here and let's go to the comparison right over here with the breath as well. I wanted to show this one because this is a good example too. Um, this one, again, it detects everything, subject detected, no faces, in focus, noise level medium. It was pretty much shot with the same exact settings and attack focus very similarly to the last. I would argue this one is a little bit sharper, but um, yeah, regardless, it's very similar settings. So the noise, again, did a fantastic job of handling it, really controlling that noise without creating kind of patches of noise in the image. So I like what it did there. I don't even feel like I need to adjust anything. If I wanted to, I could click on strong just to show you guys what it kind of looks like. Um, but there's very little difference in this scenario. If anything, the strong just winds up kind of blurring the subject slightly more too, which I don't want because noise was already taken out so well on normal. So you have remove noise, sharpen. Um, again, in this situation, I don't think I would use actually sharpen too much here, but if I really wanted to get this bird nice and crisp, I could. You'll notice that when I did that, it got the bird super nice and crisp. And you know what? It actually looks pretty good, so maybe I'll leave it for now. 
and I'll let it just do the auto determining what strength to do it at. Again, you can slide that strength up and down. You can also turn on subject only or not, which I would highly recommend for sharpen. But now let's go to the last feature. Let's turn on enhance just so you guys can see it. Um, this is what's gonna kind of uh, create um, a more detailed image, just similarly to how Gigapixel would do if you guys owned the Gigapixel program before. Um, enhance works pretty well in a lot of scenarios. I tend to always use low resolution. The reason why I say low resolution is because low resolution seems to do the best job of not creating artifacts, in my opinion, while still enhancing that detail and quality. I found that to be really true with Gigapixel, and I really liked that in Gigapixel as opposed to a lot of the other options in wildlife photography specifically. So I'd recommend using low resolution. And if you have a really low resolution image, you can also resize it up. This image was cropped in quite a bit for this uh, kind of take that I did on it. So I could resize it up. I could go up to times two, uh, times four, whatever I may want. But for the sake of right now, I'm just going to leave it on times one. Now let's compare the performance of Topaz Photo AI to Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. It's interesting to see the comparison. And honestly, I see pros and cons to them all. Photo AI tends to give even sharper, more prominent results than Sharpen AI, but Sharpen AI seems to do a little bit cleaner of a job with it with artifacts and other types of features. For example, take a look at the bird here. I would argue that you get more feather detail recovered in the bird in Photo AI, which is a good thing. However, if you drop down a little lower, you'll notice that the flowers got overcorrected and look strange now, as opposed to in Sharpen AI. Currently, there doesn't seem to be a way to adjust masking in Photo AI, as masking is only done automatically by the computer, but maybe this will change in the future. In Denoise AI, we have a similar story of pros and cons. The denoising in Photo AI seems to be more clean than in Denoise AI, which is great. It's picky, but you get a little less slight blobs of noise that annoy me in the background sometimes in Denoise AI. But you also get a softer image overall on the subject included. You'll notice here that Denoise AI actually does a better job of sharpening the subject ever so slightly as opposed to Photo AI when Photo AI is not using Sharpen. So this leads to a tricky set of results, but honestly, just like the Topaz programs before it, I believe that Topaz Photo AI is an amazing tool to have in your tool set and just has a specific use case like the other programs. It seems to be the right fit for certain photos that I took, while in other images it may not have been the best option. What I do like about it more than any previous program that they have ever created though is that it really does do all the work for you. You can pretty much mindlessly drop and drag the photo in and it will give you the optimal results possible with the program thanks to its smart AI. If you're looking for an all-in-one program, this program is a great option, and I'd highly recommend it, especially to anyone who currently does not own any Topaz products. If you do own Topaz products, but you just want to speed up your workflow for quicker results and not have to sort through multiple Topaz programs, this app may very well be a good fit for you. If you're interested in purchasing Topaz Photo AI for yourself, I'd greatly appreciate if you use my affiliate link below. It literally saves you 15% off while helping to support the channel, so there's no downside to it. I'm excited to see all the new opportunities this program creates for you all, and I'll see you guys next time.